All right, so now we are going to be making the grid. In the previous video, we already reached this part and we already made this. So th these are the pinch temperatures. This is the pinch at the hot side and this is the pinch at the cold side. 140 is on the cold side, 150 on the hot side or scale basically. And we have a hot, two hot streams and two cold streams. So the first thing we want to do is uh, the grid. Basically, we need to clean it up. How do we do that? Well, basically, anything that doesn't make sense, we need to have a decreasing sense. Temperature here should be high and temperature here should be low. And the pinch must be in between of them. Like, should be in between. It should not be outside of this range or way less than this range. That all shouldn't happen. So let's check our grid. 180, 150, 40. 150 is between 180 and 40 and it makes sense. So this checks. Next, I have 150. Is it between 150 and 40? Well, if it's 150 here, then we can just say start at the pinch. So this cancels out. Next, 180, 140, and 60. And it seems to make sense to me. 140 is between 180 and 60. And then we say, and then we see the last one, which is 105, 140, and then 30. 140 is, it cannot be in between 105 and 30. This only means that you don't have 140 and this is your maximum temperature. So basically you have 105 from one, from 30 to uh, 105, meaning this stream doesn't really reach the pinch. So we redraw this and we get something like this. Now. I know this is reaching the pinch, but we know that it doesn't really reach it. It's before it. We continue. So this is the first step and it's checked. The second step, we need to find the uh, loads on hot and cold side. And we need to check Q minimums. What does this mean? Basically, I'm going to calculate the load, meaning we have this formula, which we used before. Well, we're going to use it again. Let's start at the hot side. This section is considered the hot. Why? Because the temperature is here are higher than the pinch and this section is considered the cold because the temperatures here are lower than the pinch or at least this is how I remember it. The hot could also be cold above the pinch and this could also be cold below it. Whatever really suits you. I prefer hot and cold. Now we are going to find the hot loads, right? Now the hot load, the first one, say on the hot section, it's going to be the CP, which is two times 180 minus 150. Remember that we are, when we're calculating the loads, we are only considering it after the pinch. So your temperature here should be, oh, I'm sorry, your load, not temperature, your load should be 60 kilowatts. I'm not gonna add units because it takes too much space, but you get me. And whenever we add a load to the hot, we always add a minus sign. Then after that, we have the cold, which is going to be 4, 180 minus 140, 
which is going to give you 120 kilowatts. Of course, the rest are zeros because there is no stream. Now to check, I already found that my Q minimum is going for heating is going to be 60. So when you add this up, should give you it should give you 60. If you try adding it up, it's going to give you 120 minus 60, which is 60. So it adds up. Okay. This is just a confirmation. And similarly, we do it for the other. Now, similarly, we have cold loads here. And again, it's for this cold section. So, H2, which is this thing, it is going to be here. It's going to be the CP. And I'm trying to find these two. Uh, it's going to be the CP, which is mm, 3 times the temperature interval, which is 150 and, one, and 40, which is going to give you 440. So this in here is going to be 440, and we add a negative sign. C2 is going to be um, 2.6. 150 and then it's going to be on this interval 105 minus 30 and this thing is going to give you 195 kilowatts okay now for Q minimum cooling I need to add them up again so it is going to be the summation of these two minus the summation of these two. So 220 plus 440 minus 240 plus 195. This thing will give you 225 kilowatts, which confirms this is my Q minimum for cooling. So my steps are correct. Now, the step is completed. The next step is we start up with the matching. Now to match, for the hot side and the cold side, there are rules. The hot side would be when the number of the hot streams is less than or equal to the number of the cold streams, and you check that this is not violated, then you can actually match two streams. And the CP of the hot must be less than or equal to the CP of the cold. Make sure to know that the CP rule only applies for the heat exchangers near the pinch. Okay? As for the cold, it is the opposite. Number of cool streams should be less than or equal to the number of hot streams. And the CP of the cold side or cold streams should be less than or equal to the CP of the hot. And again, the CP will again applies to only heat exchangers near pinch. And after this, we now can calculate, we can now see if we could match. Let's check. In here, the number of hot streams should be less than or equal to the number of cold streams. Well, I have what? I have one stream equals one, so this checks. And then, if I, now I'm going to start with putting a heat exchanger near the pinch. CP of the hot is what? It's two. CP of the cold is four. Well, 2 is less than 4. So, actually, I think I may have switched the. It should be 4 there and 3 there. Okay. So, it should be like this. 
And so this means that we can add a heat exchange a heat exchanger here. Now we need to calculate the load. What we do is we look at the loads we calculated. Uh, this heat exchanger should completely satisfy one of the loads. I have 120 and I have 60. 60 minus 60 is 0. And 120 minus 60 is going to give you 60. And again, we know that the Q minimum for heating is going to be 60. Your heat exchanger here is going to have a load of 60 kilowatts. But even after this thing was completely satisfied, like this stream was completely satisfied in here, we still have a 60 remaining. And again, this is the correct minimum heating value. This thing would be a heater with a load of 60. Same thing on the other side. Now on the other side, number of the cold stream should be less than or equal to the hot. I have 2 which equals 2. This satisfies. As for CP, the CP of the cold should be less than or equal to CP of the hot. Now the cold, well, I have 3 for cold and I have 4 for hot, which is, which are greater than each other, so it fits to be the first heat exchanger near the pinch. Let's see the loads. Let's pick another color. So, actually, let's take this. Yeah, much better. So, when they cross each other out, you're going to be left out with minus 200 here. This thing would become zero. This thing is completely, this stream C1 is completely satisfied in this case. And this exchanger is going to be 240 and it would have a load of 240. Now I still have more loads and I didn't really reach my Q minimum for cooling yet. Uh, it's 200 and 220 so it's much higher than 225. We try another match since we matched those two streams then let's match those two streams. And remember, after the closest unit to the pinch, we don't really care about the CPU rule anymore. So, 195 and 220, this thing is completely satisfied. So I have 195 load in here. And you end up with 25. So, if I now add them up, I see that I reached my minimum C value, which is 220, 25 plus 200, that is 225. Now I can add my coolers, cooler here and a cooler here. The load of this one is going to be 25 as the load remaining in the stream. And the load of this one is going to be 200, again, as the load remaining in this stream. So, these values cancel out to 0, and these are completely satisfied right now. And this is basically my finished matched network. So, this is the finished match. So what we did in this exer exercise was, one, we drew the grid, we cleaned it up, two, we found the hot and cold loads, or if you want to call them below and above the pinch, and three, we checked for Q minimum satisfaction. This is the reason why we did find the Q minimum in the first part. To make sure that when we are finding the loads for the heat exchangers and whatnot, it is going to be correct. So we did all of this. And then fourth, we obeyed the 
hot and cold, number of hot streams, relation to number of cold streams. Or let's be more let's be more precise. So for the hot we made sure that the number of hot streams would be less than or equal to the number of cold and the CP of hot for the first match next to the pinch, right next to the pinch. If it makes remembering it any easier, I know that at the hot side, your hot values are always going to be less. And at the cold side, your cold values are always going to be less. Basically, the hot side and the cold side are opposite of each other when it comes to the rules. So, on the hot side, it's going to be like this. Well, on the cold side, you're going to have it like a number of cold streams should be less than or equal to the number of hot streams. CP of the cold should be less than or equal CP of the hot, if you notice they are the opposite. And we applied these rules and from there we can continue our match. This thing would obey the CP rule. Afterwards, you can distribute them however you want. Just make sure that they satisfy the load and the minimum Q value. So for the cold, you get your Q minimum for cooling from here, the cold section. And for the hot, you get your Q minimum for heating from the hot section here. And this by here, we solve the example. From here, we can continue to add a part three, which is about loops. Loops talk about reducing the number of heat exchangers, reducing the number of cool doors or heaters, and by that you reduce the cost. So it is the step after that. Or in some cases, if splitting is needed, then it's, it gets split.